Hallelujah. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Have your way, Lord Jesus. You're welcome to Turning Point Mission Center Church, a church for God's love abide. I'm Pastor Arnett Owen, and we're just so thankful that you have come to be with us today. We just say happy Sabbath to everyone, and we just praise God for this opportunity to be here once again. You know, we have so much to thank God for. Hallelujah, Jesus. He has blessed us to see a whole new month, the beginning of a new month. He allowed us to wake up this morning. Hallelujah. He did not allow the death angel to come in. He did not allow the intruder to come in. He blessed us with safety to come to the house of worship once again. Lord, I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless you. I praise your holy name. And I invite you to join me in praising God today. God, you are welcome here. You, turning point, you who join us via the internet, you are welcome to give God praise. You are welcome to open up your heart and let God set you away. We just invite the Holy Spirit right now to move heavily upon each one of us. We're so glad to have Sister Christina and her family back. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, we're glad to have you here. We're glad to have Elder Blevins. She's been on assignment. We thank God that she's here today. Uh, we were blessed to have Elder Monica last week, so I think they are having a trade time and they're on different projects. I'm not trying to say they're doing the same project, but we're glad to have her in the house with us today. And we're glad to have each of you that are here. And most important, we're glad to have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome to saturate me, Lord God. Have your way. Move me out the way, Lord God. I just want to give you praise, Lord. I want to just bless your name, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity you've given us to come together once again. We invite you now to prepare your hearts for uh, a prayer, an intercessor prayer, followed by the scripture reading for today. We have Deacon this America Garner, who will be leading us out in our prayer, as well as uh, the uh, scripture for today. So let us now prepare our hearts for prayer. We invite everyone to bow with us, because prayer is so important. And if you can't pray for yourself, just ask God to put a prayer and spirit in you. You can be praying for others. Maybe things are so well with you, you, you just want to thank him and not ask for anything. But let us now prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us all kneel as we pray. Most kind and gracious Father, we come to you today thanking you for who you are in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for being our way maker, Lord God. We thank you for being our burden barrier, Lord God. We thank you for being our heavy load sharer, Lord. We thank you for being our, the great I am, Lord. We thank you for being a provider, Lord God. We thank you for working problems out in our lives, Lord. We thank you for how you have sustained our minds, oh God. We thank you for just being so many things in our lives, Lord God. How you have carried us, oh God, throughout the years, Lord, for all your blessings that you bestowed upon us, oh God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God. We come to give you praise today, Lord, because you are worthy of it, Lord God. Regardless of our circumstances, Lord, regardless of our present time or what's happening in our lives, what's happening in this world, Lord God, you are still worthy of our praise, oh God. So we lift your name up today, Lord God, giving you glory and and honor and all the things that are due to you, Lord God. All of the praise, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, for bringing us here this morning, Lord God. For our family and our loved ones who opened their eyes this morning, Lord God, that you allowed to live to see another day, God. We thank you for it. God, we thank you for your covering, for your protection, Lord. 
over our families, Lord God, over our children, oh God, over even ourselves, oh God. God, we may not deserve it, Lord, but you still see fit to bless us anyhow, oh God. So we just thank you, Lord, because you're worthy, Lord. You are so worthy, Lord. We give you glory, God, it's due to your name, oh God. We just praise you this morning, Lord God. Lord, our hearts may be heavy for the things that are going on in this world, Lord God. Senseless acts, oh God. Just wickedness all spreading across this land, oh God. But we know, Lord, that your time is soon to come, oh God. So help us to be ready, Lord God. Help us to remain faithful, Lord God. Help us to be stewards of of what you have put us over, oh God. Help us to be faithful, Lord God, and to remain faithful, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Father, we lift up those families who lost their children, Lord. We lift up those families who lost their loved ones, oh God. Father, we just pray and ask, Lord, that there be about a change, oh God. Lord, please let a change happen, Lord. We pray according to your will, God. For people are being so selfish, Lord. But Father, we pray and ask that you just prick their hearts, Lord. It may not be happening to their families, Lord. But we pray and ask, God, that you would just touch in a mighty way, oh God. We praying for a turnaround, Lord. You said that the hearts, Lord, will become hardened, Lord. But, Father, we just pray and ask that you just touch in a mighty way, Lord God. Please, Father. Please, Lord. God, we want to thank you, Lord. We thank you for our families. We thank you for marriages, Lord God. Oh, God, we just want to keep praying for covering, Lord God. And we thank you for your shield, oh, God. We thank you for being our everlasting king, oh, God. God, some of us, we stand, we have decisions to make, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will walk with us through those challenges lord that we're about to face lord but let us remember lord that you'll never leave us nor forsake us god and that you are always there for us when we need you lord you are our present help lord so we want to thank you lord god father i pray and ask that you will move through our speaker today lord god use in a mighty way lord god and we just want to thank you lord we just want to thank you lord you've been with us since the day we were born lord you have carried us oh god you have made ways out of what no ways god you have opened doors for us, God. And we have seen you perform in a mighty way, Lord God. So we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Even in our times of trouble, Lord, even in the times, Lord, when we seem like all hope is gone or we're in despair, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that bring back to our memory of the time that you made for us once before, Lord God. And that we can trust, Lord, that you can do it again, Lord God. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for your help, Lord. Thank you for being a restore, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings, Lord. Even those to come. And we want to say, thank you, Father. And in your son Jesus' name we pray. We give you glory. Amen.
Today's scripture reading will come from 2 Kings chapter 8. Again, that'll be 2 Kings chapter 8. And I'll read verses 1 through 6. When you find it, say amen. Then spake Eliza unto the woman, whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou in thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou, had, that thou canst sojourn. For the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose, and did after that, did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years in the woman, that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Je Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Eliza has done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life, cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Eliza restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. May the Lord have a blessing upon those that hear, do, and say his word. Amen. We have a music selection followed by the preach word. How many of you know that Jesus loves you? How you know how much that he cares for you? God is an amazing God. He woke us up this morning and he started us on our way. But each and every time that you go through or whatever you see in this world, remind yourself that Jesus loves you. He loves you more than you love yourself. Even in our times of trouble and mess, God still loves us. And God just put this song in my heart. I said, Lord, what do you want me to sing? How you want me to worship you? Lord, if there's someone out there going through, God, give a word that comes out of this mouth that belongs to you, that will touch them in the way that they need to be touched. Because when you're singing, you're not just singing for yourself. You're singing for Jesus. When you sing, you ought to give God all the glory. Because he's a God all by himself. He's mighty. He's a warrior. He's a peace he is God all by himself. And the song just says, it says, Jesus, I know that you love me. God, I know you're the king of kings. Lord, oh, this trouble, Lord, the trouble that's down here, Jesus. We know, Lord, that you love us so, Lord. Oh, Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus loves me. Oh, for the Bible tells me so. Yeah, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus loves me. Oh, when I'm down and out and when no one's near me, Lord, in the nighttime, tears may fall, but I know. Oh, yes, I know Jesus loves me. Church, how many know that Jesus yeah, loves you? Yeah. Hey, yeah, Jesus, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Savior, mighty Savior, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, Jesus, when I'm weak, y'all, I know Jesus, Jesus, yeah, 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 Lord, he loves me, yeah, 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 the church ought to say, Jesus, oh, I may be weak, but he is strong. So genuine, his love is so kind. Oh, Jesus, 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 yes, Jesus love loves me. Hallelujah, somebody ought to pray. Jesus love you. Hallelujah. Stand with me please today for prayer. Hallelujah Lord God. Hallelujah Jesus. Thank you Lord God for loving us. Lord we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to stand before your people once again. Oh God it's all because of you Lord that we're here. We thank you for the gift of salvation. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for being a burden bearer. We thank you for being almighty. Lord God, it's not that we are so deserving, but it's because of your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh God, I open myself up to you. Speak to me and speak through me. Lord, you have a word for your people today. Help me, Lord, to deliver this word you've given unto me. And Lord, I pray right now that you will open the hearts of your people to receive what you have. I pray right now that your Holy Spirit will move in their hearts. They will hear you speaking directly to them. They will be encouraged. They will be admonished. They will be brought closer to you, Lord. And Lord God, the greatest prayer for salvation. Lord, if somebody here today have backslidden, if there's someone who have not accepted Savior, we pray that today they will hear you talking and they will open up their hearts and allow you to come in. They will not harden their heart. So, Lord, have thy way. Speak to me and through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word today, we, uh, we're going to springboard from uh, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 6. That's 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 6. I want to thank Dignus Garner for that powerful prayer as well as the scripture reading. And we truly thank Deacon uh, Smith for that beautiful song, just encourage our hearts to know that even though the world may not love you, you may feel unloved, but know that God loves you. We praise God. That's 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 6, the word says, And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. For your consideration today, we're going to speak on the word restore. Restore. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Restore. We thank God for each of you being here with us. And we are so happy to see Dick and his lane in the house also. Amen. Amen. 
I was blessed and she came through the door and I'm just delighted. I'm just excited about Jesus and I thank God for each of you being here. The word today is restore. I give honor to God for this opportunity. I praise God for each of you. I thank God for the elders of this house. We have two of them with us, Elder Sorrell and Elder Blevins, and we thank God for Elder Monica and her absence. Thank God for each of you, our deacons, our deaconesses, and, and all of my sister and brother in Christ. Thank God for our graduates. Some have moved from one grade level to the next. We got help some who graduate from high school, college, or whatever the case may be. But we thank God for your milestone. But we thank God for this word today, restore. The word restore is used 165 times in the Bible. And in the Bible, restoration always is in abundance. When something is restored, it is always better than it was when it began. God's promise to us is a better way, a better life, a better future for ourselves and our loved ones. Restore. You may say, what is restore? Well, there are a couple of definitions I want to share with you with restore. One is to give something previously stolen, taken away or lost back to the original own owner or the recipient. Another definition of restore is to return someone or something to a former condition, place, or position. And we know a lot of people get caught up in restoring furniture and cars and things like that. That's another definition of restore. Another is to bring back a previous right, practice, custom, or situation. Uh, another way of saying reinstate. So restore has many definitions, but we're going to talk today about restore. Uh, uh, and, and, and I just ask you a question. Have you ever lost something or someone? Perhaps you, uh, has anything ever been taken from you? Has the enemy stolen something from you that you want back. Now, most of us have experienced the loss of something or someone that we consider precious to us, whether it's a relationship, your health, your home, a vehicle, your job, promotion, or something else you hold dear to your heart. Restore. Whatever you've lost, get ready. It is about to be restored to you. I said God specializes in restoring people and things. God specializes in restoring people and things. It may be lost, but you know what? It's not lost from God. God knows all things. and He's perfect in all his ways. Now we look at our focus scripture here, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 6, it says, and when the king asked the woman, she told him. See, sometimes we, we don't have, or things are not restored to us, because we don't tell people about it. We don't ask for what we want. Sometimes we're going through things, and we won't tell people what we need. So we're suffering because we won't tell. But when the king asked this woman, she told him. And see what happened when she told him. It says, and when she told the king, he appointed an officer. An officer. In other words, he appointed an accountant to figure out everything that belongs to her. And he said he going to restore everything that was hers. And he didn't even stop there. He said, and all the fruits of the field. In other words, all the profit that been made from the land that she once owned for the seven years she's gone, God says, I'm going to restore that back to you. So don't be dismayed and don't be uh, being out of shape when things happen to you. Just pray and trust God to restore. Now, in order for you to really understand how the dots is connected here, we have to go back a few chapters. We have to go back to 2 Kings chapter 4. And I encourage you to read chapter 4, verses 8 through 37 when you get a chance. Go home and read that. It's a very intriguing reading. But I'm just going to summarize it for you. When you look here at the word of God in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, it starts out by letting us know that uh, Eliza who was a man of God, 
and he passed through this small little village called Shunem. And this is a little village, some historians says about 15 miles from Mount Carmel. I don't know, because the word didn't say it here, but for the reading said about 15 miles, but whatever the distance was, it says that Elijah passed through this small village. And, I, and, and while he's there, this woman of great, they said a woman where a great woman lived, in other words, some historians said this means her uh, financial status, she had a lot of money, she was wealthy, and she was a woman of influence, or whatever the case may be, but the Bible said this great woman. And, and while Elijah's there, she hears him speak, Elder Blevins, and then she did like we used to do before COVID came. She invited him to come home, Dignity's Lane, with her and to eat with her and her family. And see, before COVID came, we may have people come to church. We invite each other to come to our house and we sit down and eat. Now we don't do that. And I understand why. But at the same time, the word says that this woman heard Elijah and she constrained him to come to her home to eat bread. And he accepted the invitation. So Elijah went to her home and he ate with them. He used to come to the area quite a bit because he was a man of God. He, he was one of God's prophets. He was a servant of God. And he, he would go all over ministering to the people. And then word says that the woman had told him, now whenever you come this way, you just have a place to stay here. Feel free to come by and stay with us. So the word says that she talked to her husband and said, you know what? Elijah's a man of God. He's a great prophet. He's a man of God. And I want to build a, a room onto our house for him. And, and the husband heard that. And the husband said, that's a good idea, Sister Charlene. He said, I think we'll do that. And so they built a room. They put a bed in that room. They put a desk and a chair and a candlestick. So he could have a, a place to, to read and study and, and, and whatever else he needed to do. So this was a room he had. And so whenever he was in that area, he just stopped by. He didn't have to knock on the door. But he had his own access here. can go to his own quarters and rest and, and retire for the night. And uh, Elijah was pleased about that. And the story goes let us know, the word lets us know that um, he began to think about how great and great he was for this woman doing this, her and her husband. And so he called his servant Gehazi to him. He said, Gehazi, uh, tell this Shunammite woman to come in here and see me. And so Gehazi went and got her and she came and she stood kind of like in the hallway, the entry of the door there, of his room there in the hall there. And he began to talk to her. He said, now, You've done such a great thing for me. You've built this room. You and your husband built this room onto your house for me. And I can come and go as I please. He said, what do you want me to do for you? You want me to talk to the king of Jerusalem? You want me to talk to the chief commander, Deacon Garner? Uh, 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 what, what you want me to do? What can I do for you? Because you've done a great service for me. And she said, oh, I'm happy to be here with my family. You don't need to do anything for me. Now, Eliza was talking to this woman through his servant Gehazi. And then after she left, he was talking to his servant Gehazi. He said, what can we do for her? And Gehazi, as a, any good servant, he noticed, he said, Master, she doesn't have any children. And they're not getting any younger. And so um, Eliza said, bring her back in here. So he had Gehazi to go get this woman again, says Christina. And I met this one problem, wondering what is going on? The man of God keep calling me. Because you know, in this day and time, we don't see God's servant like they did back then. They really respected the men and women of God, especially the, the servants of God. That was a great respect for them. And so she came back. But this time, uh, Elijah talked direct to her. He said, now, you told Gehazi you didn't need anything. He said, but we've noticed you have no children. And this time next year, you're going to have a son. And this woman said, now, man of God, don't be playing with me. Don't be playing with me. Don't get my hope up and then you lying. In essence, you know, that's not what she said, but that's paraphrasing. And, you know, you have some people say they're a prophet. They say they're prophetess of God. And they'll tell you stuff, but it doesn't come true. So this lady didn't want to get her hopes up because every woman, but especially back then, wanted to have a child. They wanted to have a male child. And let me tell you the situation this woman was in. Even though she was a woman of influence and she was great, but in the culture she lived in, 
if her husband died before her and she became a widow, then the practice was that because she, she had no children, no son, then what he had would go to his next male kindred. So she wouldn't have anything. And so God, looking down through quarters of time, he used his servant Elijah to say, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. And God knows everything. Nothing catches God by surprise. So the story goes on. The woman, she got pregnant. She, con she conceived. She got pregnant. She, she had this child. And sure enough, by the, that next year, she had a son. And he grew. As he grew, he began to go to the field with his father. And one day, they were out there harvesting with the other servants. And, and the child began to complain to the Bertha, saying about headache. She, she, the child comes and said, my head, my head. And the father did what most fathers do. He called one of his servants to take the child to his mother. And so the servant hastened, took the child to his mother, Savannah. And, and, and the mother did probably what she knew to do, uh, the best she could do. And then the word says this child sat on her lap until about noon then the child died digging the smith now this is a child that this mother had not prayed for like hannah did but god opened her womb and gave her a male child and so the word says that she took that child up to Elijah's room laid that child just on Elijah's bed and then she closed the door and she went to her husband, who's still out in the field. And she told her husband, she said, uh, can I get one of our servant uh, and a donkey? And I need to go see the man of God. I need to go see Elijah. The husband said, what's wrong? It's not a special Sabbath. It's not a festival. not a feast day or anything. What's going on? She said, everything's well. I just need to go see the man of God. So her husband said, go on. And she told her servant, get this donkey and you drive it as fast as you can. Let me tell you to help. And, and, and they went to see Elijah. And the word says that Elijah looked out and saw this woman coming. And he told the servant, Gehazi, isn't that the Shudamite woman? Go to her and find out what's wrong. She's all well. See what's wrong with her husband, her son. What's going on? So Eli I mean, Geh Gehazi run to meet this woman. And he answers her. And she avoided the, qu answer, the question. She didn't really give him an answer. She kept on going until she got to the man of God. And she jumped down off of that donkey and she began to cry out and sob. He didn't even know what she was saying. And he said, God has withhold it from me. God has not revealed it to me. Because see, Elijah was a man that had a, a connection with God. See, he came after Elijah. And see, Elijah was a man that had a great connection with God because God used him to de defeat one man, to defeat 850 uh, prophets of Baal and Jezebel. Uh, and, 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 and when Elijah uh, was following wrong, being trained by Elijah, he told him, I want, Elijah asked him, what you want me to give? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. And he told him, you got to see me when I leave. Because see, Elijah was such a man of God's own heart. God came down and took him in a chariot of fire up to heaven. Elijah was a mighty man of God. So Elijah said, I want double portion of the power you have. So you know there was a mighty, powerful man of God. Because God granted him that. He saw Elijah take it up. His cloak came down and he took that cloak and he went on on the work for God. And so... When this woman finished sobbing, he told his servant, Gehazi, take my rod my, and, and, and my walking stick, in other words, and you go to this child and you go lay it on his face. And he said, now you go as fast as you can. Don't stop and talk to nobody. Don't have no sideway conversation. Don't let anything hold you. You go as quickly as you can. And this mother, like any mother would do, she said, I'm not leaving here until you go with me. She had faith in God, but she also knew that God had used this man's servant before. And so she refused to leave Elijah without him going with her. So Elijah followed the lady, went to her home. And the word says that he went up into his room and he saw this child laying on his bed dead. The word says that he closed the door 
And he got on his knees and began to talk to God. I don't know what Elijah was saying to God, but he talked to God. And I believe he was asking God to restore this the life back to this child. Restore this child back to his mother. And the word said that he finished praying. He got up off his knees and he laid on that child on the bed. So he put his eyes to that child's eyes his nose to that child's nose, his mouth to that child's mouth, his hands to that child's hands, his feet to that child's feet, and he, his body was stretched out on that child. And the word says that child's body began to heat up. Elijah got up, and he began to walk the floor and pray and walk the floor. And the second time, he laid back on that child the same way. And the word said that child sneezed seven times, and he was alive. He got up. He woke up. I'm talking about Restore. See, God can restore life into something that seemed to be dead. God restored, gave this lady three great blessings of restoration. The first one, he restored to her the, the joy of motherhood. Because she didn't know, she was not a mother. She had not had the privilege of being a mother. She was a woman of influence. She had a husband. And I'm sure he probably loved her. They had substance and everything. But she had not been able to experience the joy of motherhood. So God restored that joy to her. He allowed her to become a mother. And now that she's a mother, a child she probably loved dearly because she never expected to have a child and now God has allowed that child to die but praise be to God he restored that life back in that child and now uh, Elijah tells Gehazi go and get the mother and bring her in here the mother comes back in there and, and, and she sees that her child is alive digging Garner I'm sure Deacon Garner and Deacon is Garner how you are feeling. You, you had something you thought would have been taken and bad away from you and God restored it. The word says she fell down on her knees. She bowed and she fell down and when she gave God praise, then she got up and got her child. See, we got to always remember, we got to give God praise and thanks first. Don't be so quick to run and get the outcome. Give him praise that he did it. Give him praise and even sometimes he hasn't done it. Praise God because you praising God for what he's going to do. He will restore you. So here we have where well, this lady has a son. Now we're back in chapter 8. That's the history between e Elijah and this woman. In chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Then spake Elijah unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thy household, and sojourn with thy cannon, uh, with thy cannon sojourn, for the Lord has called for a famine. And it shall also come up on the land seven years. So here this woman had inside information. They call that trading. And you know, people, when you're on Wall Street, you have that inside information, they'll send you to jail about that. But see, God can tell you things. He can wish for things that take place in your bedroom. He can tell the man or the woman of God what's going on if he see fit to do that to bless you. See, God revealed this to the man of God. And he told this woman, he told her that you need, and see, the, when you look here, you don't see anywhere where she argued or said, how long, how much time I got to do, when, why do I have a, she didn't do any of those things. The words that he told her, and the woman arose, she got a family, and see, by this time, her husband has died, Elder Blevins. She's on her own. She is a widow now, but she has a son, praise God, because God restored her son back to life. God restored her son to her. So we hear in, 2 Kings chapter 8, where we see that the man of God told her there's a great famine coming. It's going to be severe. It's going to last for seven years. So you go. And she left. She went to the fertile land on the other side in the, in the Palestine area. And she went there. She tabernacled there. She bored there for seven years. And when the famine was over, she went back to her home. When she get back there, she discovered that her land, her home, and everything had been confiscated. So, show you how God works and set the stage. She goes back and she discovers that her property, her home, and everything she has been confiscated. She goes to the king there for relief. And, and the word says in verse 4, uh, the word says that in verse 4, and, when, and, and, and I'm not going to pair, I'm just going to tell you what it's first 4 and 5. But anyway, 
Elijah servant Gehazi is there talking to the king and the king is very very interested and intrigued in Elijah and how God has used this mighty man and so he was telling them things that, that God had done through Elijah and, and he told him about how there was a woman who had a son that was dead and how God restored that dead son back to his mother and the king was probably on the end of his chair his, uh, uh, listening to this and then all of a sudden this very woman he talking about walks in to the king she walks in to the king and she began and, and, and she uh, and the king said come in tell me about it and that's what he asked her in verse 6 he said tell me about it and she told him she told him everything that had gone on and see God had moved so mightily because the way she told her testimony see there are some blessings we can't get because we are not yet ready to tell our testimony hallelujah but she told her testimony in such a way that the king was moved and the king said he appointed an officer an officer see look how God was the very things that the, the one that he, uh, Gehazi is talking about when she walked he said oh king that's the woman. That's the woman. And there's her son. That's nothing but God. Perfect timing. You may be going through some things now, but when you walk in the will of God, hallelujah, the very thing that you need God to do, God will do it. He's already purposed to do it. And that's what happened here. This woman walks in and the, the very person that Gehazi is talking about appears to the king and the king don't only say give her her house bag and her lair but the king said compute that's why he appointed an officer it was someone like an accountant he tabulated everything that they had made on her profit on her property for those seven years for the time that she was gone and not only did he give her her house back her land but he gave her the proceeds the profit back to the money they had made off it talking about restore God can restore you you may go through seven lean years but hallelujah just continue to hold on God is going to restore you he's going to bless you you may be going through some hard times right now but don't throw your hands up don't give up just hold on because God is going to restore you the word today is restore hallelujah hallelujah so we see how God restored this woman he restored three times he restored her the joy of motherhood he restored her son back to her now he has restored her land her house and all her possession back to her I'm talking about restore sometimes we we lose our way you may feel disappointed discouraged or without direction and you may have lost a sense of purpose and significance but I want you to know God wants to totally restore you. Hallelujah. God wants to restore you. Just like the shooter, my woman. You may have lost your home or you may have lost your vehicle or your job. You may have lost that business venture. You may have lost your investment. You may have lost your closer friend or whatever the case may be. God wants to restore those things back to you. Perhaps you've lost a family member or a loved one. Someone that, that have backslid or walked away from the Lord. Someone that have left, walked away from the home training. Or whatever the case may be. God wants to reclaim that soul for you and your family. He wants to reclaim that soul for his kingdom. So God wants to restore that soul to a part of his family. Are you struggling with inner turmoil, rejection, insecurity, guilt? Are you struggling with these things? Jesus said that I came that you may have life and that you may have more abundantly in John 10 10 but he also let us know that I came to give you more life but the thief has come to steal to kill and to destroy and see when you're going through hard times you need to check yourself sometime God will let you go through things because he knows that's the only way you can get your attention but all the time you're going through because God has said, just like he, he said about Job, he realized he could pass the test. So sometimes God will let the enemy come. The enemy has come to steal. The enemy has come to rob, even to destroy and kill. But I want you to know, God says today he's ready to restore you. Hallelujah. In Psalms 51 verse 12, the word says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. 
So, so God wants to restore to us the joy of our salvation. Sometimes stress and trouble in life have stolen our joy and our satisfaction. But God says, I want to restore your joy. I want to restore the joy of your salvation. Sometimes the evil, the wickedness and the crime and the, and the violence in this world have robbed so many people of peace, happiness, and security. You have so many people living in fear. But God says today, I want to restore all your peace of mind. Hallelujah. So he lets us know that he wants to restore our comfort for those who are mourning. I, I can't even imagine my mind or mind how those parents are feeling losing their children like that in Texas. Uh, those people there in New York or in Oklahoma, where the case may be, how you feel when some rain crazy person just kill you senseless. And, and then we got people in a in the, in the power of position can, can change the law so you just can't go out and both those last two they just went out and bought the gun the same day they did the crime. Something wrong with that. We have no need that we need to have a gun of that kind of power on the street. And they won't even make a change. But I don't know what it's going to take, but God is still in control. God knows how to even get their attention. But I want you to know God can restore your joy. Hallelujah. He won't bring those children back, but he can give them a, a sense of longing once again. He can bring a peace of mind assurance again. Hallelujah. God sees what, what we have done. God sees what we are going through. But God is still willing to forgive us. He's willing to heal us. He wants to bring us back to our first love. So many of us have lost our first love. You know how it was. You first got saved. Everybody you saw, you were telling them about Jesus. You couldn't wait to get to your quiet place, to get your word and read and spend time with the Lord. On the bus, you walk wherever you are, you telling the people about Jesus. You were a bold witness for the Lord. And then as time goes on, life happens. Some of us have let these situations to wang us away from the Lord. We're not spending the time we need with the Lord. We're not spending time in reading the word of God, studying the word of God. God says, I want to restore your first love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you are guilty of allowing circumstances and situation, problem, and trouble to cloud your mind so you are not spending the time you should with the Lord, Jesus says today, I want to restore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is a restorer. He's willing and ready to restore our families. Praise be to God. God is willing to restore our families. Our families are in crisis. We have lost two generations. Our children, in many instances, and their children as well, have walked away from the church, have walked away from God. God says, I want to restore family. And the word, I, I'm reading somewhere, and it says 71% of our children are reared in a single parent family. Single parent. 50 years ago, a typical family was a mother and a father and many instances the grandparents all in the same house. And now we have most of our family, it says 71% of our families are being reared by a single parent. It's a father rearing his children by himself or a mother rearing his children by himself. And in their instances where they have co-parenting, but they're still not what God would have. But he wants to restore the family. Praise be to God. But I want you to know also God has mothers and fathers in his family, in his church, who are willing and ready to deposit into these broken families the things they aren't getting from their biological parents. So today, turn it point, I want you to understand, and those that are listening out there, God has not just given you your family just so you can be in comfortable with your children and enjoy. He's doing that so you can be prepared, be a vessel he can use to deposit into other children, other families going through. God wants to re restore uh, marriages. He wants to restore marriages. He wants to restore marriages original plan. God's original plan for marriage was a man 
married to a woman. God had written a plan for marriage, whether the man finds a woman, not that a woman finds a man, or a man married to another man, a woman married to another woman. God had written a plan for marriage, for a man to be married to a woman. God wanted to restore marriage. He wanted to restore marriage where he is the center. He's the glue that holds the marriage together. When God is the center of your home, I'm here to tell you, when trouble comes, and trouble will come, but you will weather the trouble because you're one in the Lord. Jesus Christ is the glue that holding you together. Jesus Christ is the one to help you realize that you got a plan, you're on the same team, and you got to work together. So God want to restore families. He want to restore marriages. He want to restore love, courtship, companionship. He want to restore integrity, honesty in marriage. He want to res restore respect, faithfulness, and trust worthy in marriage. We have too many people living together as married, but it's an arrangement. They can't afford to be not married because they need each other finance, so they stay together. They're not married because they're in love with each other or they're married because they want to, the best for their family and because they want to be an instrument, an institution for God. They have all the other reasons why they are married. But God says, today I want to restore family. I want to start with the father and the mother. I want to, from the father and mother, I want to restore that marriage, that love. I will restore the children. God has a people in his church that will speak into the children's lives those things they are longing. Our children are longing for so many things. And many times we as parents, whether it's a two-parent family or a single-parent family, many times we're so busy working, so busy trying to provide, we miss what our children are saying or not saying. But God has people in his house, in his family, that can speak wisdom, love, affection, patience, and all these things our children are lacking into them. God has people who are willing and ready to deposit these things in our children. Godly, loving, nurturing people, God is ready to use them to restore our children. That's why our children are, are, are killing. We see an increase in crime, and a lot of our children killing other people. They're killing other children, killing each other, and killing other people. But God says today, I want to restore the family. I want to restore the children. I want to restore this community. I want to restore America. When we place the broken pieces of our lives in God's hand, God restores us far greater than we were. God also will restore our finances. Are you struggling financially? God's work in every aspect of our lives, including our finances. God uses our finances to teach us to trust him, to become trustworthy, to prove his love to us, to guide us to help others and to meet the needs of our sisters and brothers. You may say, Pastor, now how did God use our finance to, to prove his love to us or our trustworthiness? Well, first of all, he tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all, not some, not most, but all these other things will be added to us. So God uses that to strengthen our trust in him. If we are seeking God, we are seeking to do what he wants to do, seeking righteousness, God is going to provide whatever we need. If we need a house, don't you know God know that? If we need a job, don't you know God knows that? And he'll provide that whatever we need, we got to put God first. We got to seek first the kingdom of God and his right. And we got to make sure we line up the will of God. We line our lives up the will of God, whatever we need, however we need it, when we need it, God will sustain us until he's provided. He will provide for us. So he wants us to trust him. He also wants to develop trustworthiness in us. Yes, and Luke 16, 10, this is important. So many people struggle with this. Luke 16, 10 says, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. So what God is saying that if, if I, he knows if I can't trust you with $200, I certainly can't trust you with $2,000. Because if you won't give me $20 on a $200, I give you certainly not going to give me $200 on $2,000 I give you. So some of us are struggling financially because we are being unfaithful to God. We will not be faithful with our tithes and our offering. God 
trusts us with that. But he knows also when he can't trust us. And when he can't trust us, he doesn't give it to us. So that's another thing. God want to restore our finances, but we got to learn to tr let trust God with our finances. When we give God all of our finances and, and trust God to be the steward, for, trust God to administer it and to show us how to use it, he will bless that uh, what's left over. He tells us 10 belongs to him. Then he tells us an offering. He don't define what the offering is, but that love we have in our heart for God defines what the offering. But if you don't give God your 10%, you're stealing, you're robbing from God. And you rob from God, God said he'll blow on it. It'd be uh, like a bag with holes in it. And anybody ever put something in a bag that had holes in it? What happened? It went on through. That's why some of us are struggling. And God also uh, tests our finances by testing us love. He tells us in, in Luke chapter 11, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. It's Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. It says, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that act? So many of us are struggling because we are not willing to ask God to help us to overcome that lack of faith. And, and God want to prove to us his love. He want to do things for us, but because we won't give him access, give him control, then we have to go lacking. And he lets us know that in, in Galatians 6, 9, he says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Many of us start out running this Christian journey, and because it gets hard along the way, we stop. But God said, don't get weary. He says, keep on in due season, he's going to give you reward. In due season, you're going to get what God has for you. God also wants to restore our health. Praise be to God. He wants to restore our health. And, and he lets us know that uh, in restoring our health, he tells us how we can get our health back. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wound. So God wants us to know that if we uh, follow his plan, he'll restore our health. God has given us a plan in Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy 14 how to have good health. So we treat our body like God wants us to. God will restore our health. Uh, many times you get sick, when the first thing to do, the doctor start changing what you eat. He start changing your diet and everything. That's because God made our bodies and he knows everything about our body. So God wants to restore us. He wants to restore our, our families. He wants to restore our marriage. He wants to restore our children. He wants to restore our finances. He wants to restore us. Praise be to God. So you might be uh, in a furnace of affliction right now. You might be alone and lonely. You might even feel lost and afraid. And so many people feel like that. Your life may lie in pieces, scattered across the floor of despair. You are maybe looking at these pieces and wondering how will they ever be whole again? But God, hallelujah, but God can take the shattered pieces, glory be to God, he can take the shattered pieces of your life and can mend them back and, and that, that's broken in, in such a way where the vessel is so strong and it's stronger to hold all the blessing God has for us. So I want you to know God is in the business of restoration. He wants to restore. God has promised not only to restore us with what we love, but to restore it abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to restore it abundantly. That's like Job. Job went through some things. But hallelujah, because Job trusted the Lord, God restored him with twice as much he had. Hallelujah. So I'm letting you know today the word is restore. Hallelujah. You maybe have lost some things. You may be in trouble about the things you've lost, but just hold on to God. Just trust God and God will restore you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We just got to appear to God's unfailing love and his great compassion. And God will blot our sin. God will forgive us. God will restore us. Praise be to God. I'm here to let you know that I hasten my seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I thank the Lord that he's a God that can restore. I thank 
thank you, Lord, that God specializes in restoring. Hallelujah. God will restore your joy and your peace. Hallelujah. The world may have taken your joy away. All the things you're going through, the trial, the trouble, the situation, the affliction you're going through. God is saying today, I want to restore your joy. I want to restore your peace of mind. God want to restore your family. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Don't give up. Trust God. He will restore your family. God want to restore your children. Hallelujah. God want to restore your children. We just have to do what God said. God said train them up. Hallelujah. And fear the admonition of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we do our part, we can trust God to take care of our children. Oh, they may go away, but they'll come back. Glory. Hallelujah. Just like that woman, her child died for a moment, but she didn't give up. She continued to believe that God was going to bring him back and God restored life back into him. Some of our children have walked away, but we just got to keep on praying. We got to keep on believing. God will restore that love back in the heart. God will restore our children. They'll come back like that prodigal son. Hallelujah. They may get out there in the world and do all types of things. But God, in his mercy, he keeps his head to protect you around him. And the full of time, God will restore your child. So don't give up. God will restore your child. Thank you, Lord. And God will restore our first love. God want to restore the joy of working in the vineyard. Hi, you know how it felt we first become a part of God's family. He want to restore a yearning in your heart to seek the lost. He want to restore in your heart a yearning to deposit something good in that person. A lot of times you see people acting out and doing all type of wicked things. They are doing that because they don't know God. Hallelujah. But you who know the Lord, if you follow your faith like Elijah did, he prayed. And he prayed, and he prayed, and God restored the life back into that will of son. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Well, to that, shoot my woman, son, because she wasn't with her at that time. But I want you to know God wants to restore. He wants to restore our finances. But we got to give him control. He wants to restore our health. He wants to restore everything that the devil has taken from you. God wants to restore. God wants to take that which is broken and put it back together again and make it far better than it was before. He wants to take the shattered pieces of your life. I said the shattered pieces of your life and glue them back together with his love. Hallelujah. And see, God's love is the glue to hold everything together. God's love is stronger than a crazy glue. God's love is stronger than a gorilla zoo uh, glue. So I just want you to know God's love can take our shattered life. God's love can restore everything that the devil has taken with us. God's love can restore those things that we've allowed life and circumstances take away from us. Sometimes we've allowed our life and our circumstances to get us so burdened down that we fail to spend time with God. And when we stop spending time with God, it's just like a person who stops eating. They're going to get weak. So I want you to know God wants to restore your love for his word. Hallelujah. God is ready to restore whatever you're going through, whatever been taken from you. God wants to restore it back to you right now. Hallelujah. And he wants to make you stronger than you ever was before. And God has promised to restore us abundantly. I said God wants to restore. He wants to restore everything that the evil force has taken away. God wants to restore those things that, that's going to bring joy to your heart. God wants to restore. Hallelujah. I said the word today is restore. Hallelujah. If you're going through some things. And it look like you're losing. Look like they're taking you. Just know you just hold on and do see them. Hallelujah. God will restore it back to you. Oh, Lord, Lord God, I thank you. 
I thank you being restored. Hallelujah. That was a time in my life I was broken, but God restored me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have restored me. Hallelujah. I thank God that the things that society and world taking me God gave it back to me there was a time in my life because I loved my love was abused I was afraid to love there was a time in my life because I cared and gave and people took advantage I began to retreat and draw back but hallelujah thank you Lord he restored my love and I was able to love again and I thank God for that man called Elder Michael F. Orr because God helped me learn how to love and trust again I said whatever you're going through God will receive Restore it to you. You just need to hold on. It's not when you want it, but it's on God's timing. So if you're lacking anything, just trust God and He will restore it back to you in the fullness of time. Restore, restore, restore. think I'm alright There's a smile on my face Everything's okay But on the inside There's a different story I stumbled down this road And I've got so far to go I'm a broken on my knees again Longing for a touch from you I need your hands to restore me Lord, I need your mercy Take me to the place I used to Give me another 
a chance I want to be a new man Please restore me who I And we'd be happy to pray with you. We'd be happy to accept you to a part of this church family. And if you uh, do not live, we can locally come and fellowship up. We can tell you about our online presence and how you can be a part of those ministries. But again, we just want you to know that God wants to restore you. Whatever been taken from you and has been taken that has, and, and God wants to restore you more abundantly than what you lost. Just like he did with Job, just like he did with the, the Shudamite woman. We saw how God restored her, and he wanted to do the same thing for us. But we got to have faith. She had faith in God. She trusted God. She didn't argue with him. Job didn't argue. We got to trust God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, before we go, I need to share a couple of announcements with you. Well, again.